Hey everyone, my name is Brendan. If this is your first time, I'm a product designer here in Los Angeles for a SaaS company. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the first UI principle in the series, white space. The first thing we're gonna do is define what white space is and talk about the different types of white space and then show off some examples. After that, we'll talk about the benefits and challenges of applying white space. And then we'll talk about best practices for applying white space and go through a couple of exercises. That way you can get some practice. And by the end of this video, you should feel confident about how you can apply white space in your UI designs. Make sure to subscribe so you can see the other 11 UI fundamentals that we're gonna be covering in this series. And let's go ahead and talk about white space. So let's define what white space is. White space is the area between design elements. It is also the space within individual design elements, including the space between typography glyphs, AKA readable characters. Something to note is despite the fact that it's named white space, it doesn't have to be white. In fact, it can be any color, texture, pattern, or even a background image. And there's two different types of white space, macro and micro. And now we're gonna talk about those two. So with micro white space, this is the small piece between the design elements. And you can find it between lines and paragraphs. It also includes the space between grid images and that used to separate menu links. And micro white space has a direct impact on content legibility. Whereas macro is the large space between major layout elements and the space surrounding that design layout. You'll find macro white space to the right and left of most websites content and in the space between a website's content blocks. So let's play a little game. Let's decide if a user interface is showing a macro or micro white space. So here's the first image. And what I want you to do is take a guess and then we'll go over it together. So I'll give you a second to think about it. Now that you've had some time, Let's go ahead and look into it. So for this one, it's actually the most difficult one that I put in here. And the reason I chose it is because, well, first of all, I, I think it's micro. And the reason being is you're doing separation between an H1, H2 and an image. But you could also sort of define this as macro because it is the major elements of the website. And the reason I wanted to throw this one in here is because sometimes you're not always gonna be able to distinct between macro and micro, but that's really not the point of this. You just wanna know, generally speaking, how spacing should work with uh, white space. And so I just wanted to make it clear that you're not always gonna be able to tell. Um, but with that said, let's move to the next one. The second one here is Google Images. And I'm gonna give you a second to think about it. Now that you've had some time to think about it, let's go ahead and look. I would consider this macro and there really isn't room for a debate, I would say, because it is the major layout and there's really no other elements. So this one's fairly easy. And you're gonna see this a lot on um, different examples online if you look at different articles. Now this next one is the hero section of a website. So what do you think this is? And now that you've had time to think about it, just like Google, it is a major layout. There isn't, a, there isn't many elements that you're working with. There are a few images in that design, but overall, I would say this is macro. Now let's move on to the last one. Now this last one is a picture of the Air Jordan blog. So what do you think that this is? All right, now that you've had time to think, I would consider this micro white space because you have paragraphs and an image that you're trying to create space between. So with that said, let's move on to the next thing here. Let's talk about some benefits. So the benefits here are that I have on the screen, a lot of them are pretty similar to each other. So creating balance is similar to creating breathing space and improving readability and comprehension is, is fairly similar and, and better interaction. But overall, what you're doing is you're giving the page balance and it's just like reading a newspaper. If you know where to begin and where to end, it's a lot easier to dissect and understand what's going on on your page. And giving the page some breathing room makes it not feel overwhelming and cluttered. So that's the benefits of white space. Let's talk about some of the challenges. So really, I see there's two main challenges. The first is that there is some subjectivity to how much white space is too much and uh, if it looks good. 
The other thing is it can be seen as wasted space to some business owners because they might want to have more information than say the designer wants. So you're going to have a little bit of a tug of war sometimes with that. So there are going to be some times potentially that you face where you get some pushback as the designer trying to implement the white space. But if you can clearly deliver the message or whatever you're trying to get across and still use white space in a, in a valuable way, I think that there is a way that you can convince somebody to get on board with it. So now let's talk about best practices. So for micro, the first thing is make sure to follow a spacing system. And so there's a few different ways you can do this. There's I have here is two examples, 8px and 10px. So what this simply means is, let's say you do 8px, you would basically have variations of 8, so it would be 8, 16, 24, etc. And that's the amount of space that you would leave between elements on a micro level. Um, for line spacing, you want to make sure that you have it set on default, whether you're using Figma Sketch or Adobe XD, they have the auto uh, selected. And generally speaking, if you don't want it to be auto, you can have it around 12. I said 10 to 15, but 12 seems to be the magic number that they use. Uh, that's So that's the amount of spacing between each line in, say, like a paragraph. And make sure to use spacing patterns whenever you have a lot of elements on the page. That way people know what goes with what and gives the page some structure. Now with macro, let's talk about some of the best practices. You gotta consider the branding and messaging that you're trying to get across with white space. And this kind of goes back to facing the challenge of getting pushback from say, an, an owner of a business. If you use white space correctly, you'll be able to get their message across and still be able to um, have that white space available. The next thing is to make sure that the CTA is prioritized. You wanna make sure that if there is a lot of white space on the page, people still know what they need to do. And lastly, don't just use white, make sure to use other things, whether that is uh, other colors or uh, you know a background image, etc. So don't just put yourself in a box is what I'm trying to say. Now, let's practice what we learned. So what we're gonna do is a few different exercises. This first one we're gonna do is line spacing. So in order to participate in these exercises, what you're gonna do is just download the Figma link in the description and you can practice alongside with me. So for this first one, what you see here is one paragraph and a header. And obviously the, the line spacing is pretty tight for the paragraph and the amount of space between the header and the paragraph really isn't that great. So let's see, go ahead and practice. I'm gonna give you a shot and then show you how I would have uh, made changes to it. Great, so this is what it looks like. This is how I did it. So what you see here is I added some line spacing. I believe I kept it at auto. And realistically, you're probably always gonna have it at, on auto, but it is still good to be aware of what you can play with and give yourself some flexibility because you're not always going to want to have it on auto. You want to give yourself some room to, to mess around with things. And then I allowed for 20 um, pixels between the header and the paragraph. So let's go on to the next exercise. All right, for this next exercise, it's very similar to the first one. What I did is I added three paragraphs and one header. So you're gonna do the same thing that you just did in the first exercise, but now just with a few more elements. All right, now that you've completed it on your end, let me show you how I did it. So here you go, what you can see here is, I'm gonna pull up the, actually I can just show it here. There's gonna be 30 pixels of spacing between the two paragraphs up top and then I allowed for 40 pixels to show a slight difference. This is like the design pattern that we're talking about, or the spacing pattern, I should say. And then I went back to 30 pixels here. These are also gonna be set at auto, which is 24, um, a font of 24, and then a spacing of 36. And that's basically what I meant. It's, it's basically 10 to 15 uh, points larger than the font, if that makes sense. So let's go to the third exercise. So for this third one, it looks somewhat like a blog. What we have here are some tags up top and then a few of the blog posts and a way to you know go left and right and click to view more on the button. What you wanna do is just give spacing between all of these elements. All right, now that you've taken your shot, I wanna show you how I did it. And I should say, I didn't actually do this. I got this as a resource online and 
the way that they did the spacing, I, I did do some adjustments, but uh, so there's 90 pixels here um, from the tags to get to the blog posts, and then there's 25 pixels between here. I generally end my spacing in fives and zeros, so there are gonna be some instances where you might not always stick to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or you know, 8, 16, 24, etc. Here, there's 50 pixels, 50, and 50. So we could have done maybe, we could have brought this down and let's hold shift, move it down. And we could have, you know, had it all 50, but I just didn't feel like that worked as well. So that's why I gave it 90. Let's move to the next one. So for this last one, this is essentially like a hero section on a home page, or it could be like a landing page. And what I want you to kind of do is space out the phone from all of the elements on the left side and then make sure that the elements on the left side, such as the buttons and the paragraphs, have a little breathing room. So go ahead and take a shot and then I'll show you how mine looks. Great. Now let's take a look at how I did it. So over here there is a much more spacing. I allowed for 200 pixels and then over here for the buttons I, I did 50 pixels between these and then 30 pixels between the buttons. So I hope that these exercises were helpful. Let's wrap up the video. So for the last thing I just wanted to show a few more resources that you guys can use. These links are going to be in the description. I really hope you guys found this valuable. In the next video we're going to be talking about color. Make sure to like the video if you got any value and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh.